Today I want to talk about strength. We're in this series more than a Sunday, and we've been looking at what does it look like for God to in, in totally take over our every day, not just Sunday. You know, sometimes we can put God in a box and put him in Sunday. Like, you're my Sunday feeling. You're my Sunday ritual. You're my Sunday habit. And so I, I see God and I experience him. But the Lord really just, this year, he's like, hey, this is a year of torrent. It's a year of many waters of my voice. And I don't want just Sunday. I don't want just 10% of your, your week. I want all of it. So we've been looking at what does it look like for God to totally take over. How do I want the Lord to take over? In fact, can we just spend a, a minute right now and just ask the Lord to come and take over? Come on, how many came in with an agenda today? Maybe you came in ready to be tickled or entertained or talk to a specific thing. But can we just give up our agendas right now to the Lord and just say, Lord, come and have your way. Whatever you want to do right now, come on. Lord, we need you. And we, we thank you, Lord, that you already set the pace with the worship, God. You set the tone of you speaking, you doing your work. So, Lord, I pray for myself even, just as this word is delivered today, Lord, have your way. Have your way. Your way is better than mine. And even the things that I'm praying over, God, if they need to be corrected, Lord, help me to see with eyes like you. Let me just to hear with ears, Lord God, to hear your voice clearly. We love you, Jesus, and we trust you. We just want more of you. Amen. Amen. I want to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Great definition of strength in our relationship with Jesus. Starts off in verse 9, says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. I love how he starts us off because he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Now this is good news for you, and this is good news for me, is that when we come to the Lord... He offers us grace. That's really good news because if you understand how salvation works, it can't be attained by any works that we do. You can, do, you can live your whole entire life and try to attain salvation, and you won't. You can't. And in fact, before Christ came and died on the cross, they would bring their sacrifices to the, the temple, and they would sacrifice that to atone their sin for a time. And it only lasts for a certain time, and you have to come back and atone for your sin again. But when Jesus came, he paid the ultimate price so that we could be free because of grace. So this is great news for us, and, and talking about strength today, we're talking about coming into a place of grace where the Lord gives us the strength and power we need in order to live our lives that we need to live. How many are trying to accomplish something in your life? I, I'm trying to do something with my life. I'm trying to live a certain pace. I'm trying to live a certain way for my family, for my kids, for my wife, for this church. I'm trying to do something. And all of us have a story. You're all trying to do something with your life. Trying to build something. Trying to move into something. Your, your career maybe is changing or growing, expanding. Maybe you've just moved into the city and your territory is different now. Whatever you are, we're all in this place of grace. Where the Lord, when he covers us with his grace, he gives us an ability that is beyond our human ability. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul says this. He says, well, in that case, let me boast in how weak I am. How do you know anybody who does that? They just boast about their weakness. They come in and say, I'm terrible. Ain't it great? I'm so weak. Isn't it awesome? No, we don't hear that a lot, but when you understand that when you're at the end of yourself, God is at his best, you start to celebrate your weakness. You start to celebrate your inadequacies. When you're not good enough for what you know you're called for, you praise God because you know that he's the answer to what you can't do. And so Paul says this, he says, uh, the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you, my power is made perfect in your weakness, and he says, well then therefore let me boast Gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest 
on me. I wrote this down. I put this in your notes. Strength is less about what we can carry and more about proximity to the one who carries it all. You want to talk about strength, and I want to define it before we dive in. I want to talk about strength is, strength is knowing who carries the true power and getting close to him. Strength isn't about you becoming better in who you are. And that's good to, to better yourself. But that's not where strength comes from. When you're in Christ, you understand something that you can't attain power and strength on your own. It's only by God's grace on you. And then when his grace is on you, you realize that when you are aware of your weakness, it's when God can be his finest in your life. It's when he can come in and meet you at where you can't attain. It's where he, he comes in and empowers us to be what we can't on our own. It's not about what we can carry. That's what the world wants to tell us is, is that it's all about what you can handle. How much you can put on your plate. And it's crazy how many, how many people uh, brag about busyness these days. You ever notice that? Is it just me? In a conversation, it's almost like a competition. How you doing? Busy, man. Super busy. Oh, I got so, so busy. Like, wow. It's crazy. And I remember a time where me and Ashley actually checked each other. Because, you know, life can be busy. It can feel like you got a lot going on. We checked each other. And we'll do check-ins every once in a while. I'll be like, hey, let's take something out of our vocabulary. Can we? And it was actually her that brought it up. And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, can we stop saying busy? Are we trying to prove something? Tell everybody we're busy? It's a busy season. We've got lots of stuff. We're so busy. Is that like, a, like an award we're wearing? Like, look at me. I'm busy. I got lots to do. Very important person. I'm busy. So can we just take that out of our vocabulary? Because it's not about how busy we are, right? Strength isn't about what we can carry. It's not about us saying, wow, look at the load that you're carrying. No, you understand when you're in Christ that it's his power that's sufficient, not yours. So instead of saying, I'm busy, say, the Lord is busy. <laughs> He's doing a lot in my life that I can't do on my own. God is working on things that I can't even handle on my own. And so when I'm, I'm moving and flowing in this favor, it's not because of my busyness. It's not because of what I can do. But it's because the Lord is on it. The strength of the Lord comes from his grace. And the grace on your life is the strength to do what you otherwise can't do without him. Man, I hear the Lord telling somebody, someone today, to come close to him. Maybe you've been in your life relying on your own strength. And so when we talk about strength, you're like, I don't know how strong I am. I don't know, I, I can't handle that much. But I feel the Lord telling you today that it's not you, it's his grace that covers you and gives you strength. That's something to get excited about. It's the Lord on you. And I don't know what you came in here with today. I don't know what part of your story you're in. And again, we've been talking to a lot of you in different seasons. Some have lost someone, some have moved into a new territory in your life, new chapters, new things. And with it comes this need for a savior, a need for strength, a need for power that's beyond us. And I believe that the Lord wants to do that today, he wants to show us who he is. I want to look at a story in the Bible that the Lord showed me this week and it reminded me of what it looks like to be in strength. Exodus chapter 17 is where we find it. Exodus chapter 17, we're going to start in verse 8. The Melekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him 
and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with the sword. First thing I want to realize here is that Moses was being attacked. And I want to speak to somebody in the room that you might be in a season right now where you feel attacked. You feel like the enemy has kind of moved in on your territory. Maybe you've been going strong and all of a sudden you feel a little bit of war waging. You feel a little bit of, of shaking in your camp. And Moses, the first thing he does is he says to Joshua, which is the next generation of leaders under him. He says, Joshua, go and fight. I'm going to take the staff and go to the top of the hill. Now, if we rewind a little bit, we'll realize that Moses was taking that which God put in his hand to show the strength of the Lord. Do you remember back? If you remember back to the story of when God first called Moses, he asked him a very simple question. He had called him to free the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. That was the calling. Can you imagine? You save all these people. And when he put that calling on his life, he showed him the tool which, which he was going to use. He said this question, what's in your hand, Moses? And Moses, looking down, he saw his walking stick, and he said, a rod, a staff, a walking stick. And the Lord said, good, put it down. Now, I love this, and this is so important because I believe that God has put something in your hands in order to bring victory in your life, and yet some of us, we don't realize what's in our hand yet. To you, it might look like a walking stick, but little did Moses know it was going to be something that parted the Red Sea. It was going to be a stick that brought water for the Israelites to, to, to be able to drink. It was going to be a miracle working stick when God got involved in it. And I want to encourage somebody in the room today that there's going to be things that you face, maybe even right now, that you're facing and that you feel like there's a shaking in the camp and God's going to remind you of what he put in your hand for this season. There's something that God places in your, in your hands in one season that's actually meant for the next. And if we look back, we see that God is always working to prepare his people for what you're facing now. I remember back to when we first got called into Philadelphia and we were trying to explain what the Lord had placed on our heart for Philly. We're like, yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're going to launch this church called Change Church. And our, our initiative is just to help transform the city. We want to come in and we want to serve. We want to love. We want to bring about Jesus' love. And we, we want to have the creative side. So we're Helm Creative Studios, our business, and we're going to work together. It's going to be all things. And I remember somebody looking back at us and saying, I'll never forget it. I said, oh, so you're just a videographer. And that stuck with me. And maybe some of you, you have something in your hands that God has blessed and put favor on, and yet other people look at you and say, well, it's just that. It's just a rod. It's just a staff. It's a walking stick. It's just a camera. And little did we know that God was going to use that in order to open up doors, that, like the Bible says in, in, in Revelation, that no man can shut. And there's something, I just want to encourage someone in the room, because there's something in your hands that looks meaningless, that might look insignificant, that God wants to put his hand upon so that he can take you places that you can't go on your own. And when the Amalekites came in, Moses remembered back to you, God saying, what's in your hand, Moses? Moses said, a rod. He said, throw it down. And as soon as Moses gave that staff into God's hand, it became a miracle working stick. As soon as you place that talent, that gift, that thing that God has put in your hand in his, it becomes a miracle working thing that's moving and working on your behalf. It's the grace that's sufficient for you. It's the power that's made perfect in your weakness. It's when I don't have enough. And Melchites are coming in and Moses says, no, I'm going to go to the top of the hill and I'm going to use what God put in my hand to bring about victory for the land. And I'm just encouraging you that as we celebrate Father's Day, we celebrate men, 
I, I, I'm telling you, I, I believe that God has placed his hand upon our men. Now, women, you too, for sure. But I believe that there's a, an attack on the men. When you visit churches, not like ours, but when you visit churches, you realize it's women-dominated. How many realize that? Right? Men don't show up. Not here. And we look around, we're like, okay, we got guys in this room. We got guys who are involved. We got guys who show up. Guys who put it, put it to practice. Don't just say something, but they do it. That's awesome. But I believe there's a tack, and there's going to be... There's going to be a time where, and if you're not in it already, there will be a time where there will be something that will come against you to try to take away what God has placed on you. Try to get you off track. Try to say you're not good enough. Try to say, oh, that's not, that's not what you need to be focused on. You need to be focused on this. And though the vision and though the things may try to be attacked, I believe the Lord is going to place you clarity on you to realize what he put in your hand is going to bring about victory. And this might be victory for your family. This might be victory for your kids. This might be victory in your career. This might be victory in what God has called you to build. Because some of you, God has called you to build something here on earth. Build a business. Build a nonprofit. Build a movement. Build something. And God has called you to it. And there will be days. The Amalekites will come in and you'll be like, oh my goodness. Where did this come from? We're on mission. We're going towards it. And all of a sudden your kids come home and something at school happened. And you're like, what the jazz? We're going smooth. We're going strong. All of a sudden you show up to work and things don't mess out. And you didn't get that, you didn't get that, uh, you know, that raise like you thought you were going to. You didn't get that shout out like you thought you deserved. And here you are, you're like, God, God, what's going on? And I believe that God wants to remind you of what he put in your hand. I remember thinking back, just thinking, yeah, just a videographer. That's all I am. Just a videographer. And yet God wants to bless you. He wants to put his hand on that thing. So my question to you is, what has the Lord placed in your hands that he wants you to use in this season? I believe God is going to specify and clarify what he wants to use in this season. And you might have to think back. Man, what, God, what did God place in my hand back in the day? What did God place in my hand when I was young? What did God place in my hand even last year? What was it that God has start to build and you say, I want to use this. I want to use this. And when things get shaken up, you realize, oh, God already gave me the tool I need for this. What has God placed in your hand? See, Moses looked out for Joshua, and he acted on behalf to help him succeed. The Lord was using Moses to lead the way in order for Joshua to step into his calling. I love this, and for Mother's Day, I always step in to change kids, and I get to teach. So I take over for all the ladies just to have their day, you know. So I remember being in there this last year, and just, or this last uh, Mother's Day, and just taking in just all what the kids are saying, what they're learning. I'm, I'm asking them about, like, you know, what are you guys working on right now? What are you learning all? And it's crazy to see this next generation lean into what we're blazing the trail for. And seeing these kids and thinking, where will they be because of those that have said yes to the calling? Where will these students be because of those who have said, I'll blaze the trail first? I I'm so grateful for our Change Kids team. In fact, can we just give it up for our Change Kids team? Some of you are in the room, yeah? Loud enough so they can hear you in the room, all right? Come on. Yeah. But I think of these students and where they will be. And I think of my kids and how they look up to a Doc, a Kirby, a Sean, a Robin. Those in their life that have spoken life into them. And a lot of you in this room, uh, Ashley mentioned, just have, have spoken life into our kids. And I think when Moses was like, all right, there's something going on. There's something about stepping into the Lord's strength that not only empowers what you need to do to get into victory, but also empowers everyone around you to step into victory. Moses stepped on top of the hill, and he said, I'm going to raise my hand above my head. I'm going to raise this staff that God has put in my hand so that victory can come on the land. And I wonder what God is calling you to do 
in this season to blaze a trail for others. Here's what I found out about Christ, is when you come into Christ, Christ always gets your eyes off of yourself. The deeper you go with Christ, you realize it's not about you. When you first come to Christ and you might not know a lot, you might not know him very much, it might all be about you. You know, it's like, Lord, thank you. Give me, give me, give me, bless me, bless me, bless me. And your prayers are very, like, shallow. But just like, Lord, bless me, save me, keep me safe. But the deeper you go with Christ, you realize that Christ wants your eyes out. The closer you get to Christ, you start realizing everyone around you and their needs above your own. And your prayers change. They're not about, bless me, bless me, bless me. They're about, Lord, help me to be a blessing to others. Lord, help me touch someone today in my work. Instead of, Lord, remove that inconvenience from me. It's, Lord, help me to be a change for that inconvenience. Instead of, Lord, change Philadelphia. You say, Lord, how can I change Philadelphia? Lord, my, my coworkers, they're terrible. Just kill them all. Instead of that, you say, Lord, how can I love and plant seed so that things can change? It's a difference. But Moses saw something. He was close to the Lord, and when he saw the attack, he was like, I got to set Joshua up to succeed and be the one who's the victor. And how many are grateful for those in your life who have blazed the trail for you? I have men and women in my life who have blazed the trail in prayer. I used to watch my grandpa as he prayed, and it was like he was in the room with Jesus. And I was looking, I was like, I don't see Jesus, but he's talking like he's right there. And he would just be, he would be crying, and he'd be talking, and be like, Lord, I love you. Oh, thank you for your prayer. Oh, you're here. You're here with me. And I'm like, where? Where? Just as a kid, I was like, where? And I watched him closely, and I learned, and I gleaned, because he blazed the trail for me. He blazed the trail of what it looks like to follow Christ. And a lot of you in this room, you're going to be the, bla the trailblazer for those following you. You're going you're gonna to get Christ. You're going to know him and love him and feel his presence and hear his voice. And you're going to show the next generation, hey, you fight. I'm going to the top of the hill. I'm going to hold up what God has for me so you can win. And I believe we're doing that as a church. Is we're standing in the gap right now. I believe there are more to come that are lost and confused, and hurt, and broken, they have not found Christ yet. And we are here today, we are here in this room, because we're blazing a trail. We're saying, Lord, use us. Why do we put these little invites on your chair every week? Because we're trailblazers. We're finding those that don't know they need Christ yet. We're finding those and bringing them into the family. The, the, the scripture says it like this. He brings the lonely into families. But God wants to use us. And I want to ask you, will you pray that prayer saying, God, show me how you want me to live. Show me how you, show me the hill I need to climb in order to hold up what you put in my hands. Show me how to be the trailblazer. I'm wearing a bracelet today that my kids and my wife got me. It's got their names engraved on it. Not going to lie, they gave it to me a week early because I found it. And our packages, <laughs> accidentally. I brought it, and Ashley goes, oh, shoot. Can never surprise you. I'm like, I didn't know what it was. And I brought it, and I couldn't get it open. It's got this little, little secret latch or something that you open it. But I, for the longest time, I was trying to, like, wear it in Scotland when I went to film. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get this open. I'm going to wear it. It's going to be so cool. I'm going to wear their names, you know, whatever. Couldn't get it open. So I left it. I'm like, you know, I don't want to lose it, so I'm going to leave it here. I got back, I put it on today, and what a reminder of who I'm living for. Man, what a reminder. And I wonder what God wants to engrave on you of why you're getting up every day. Because it's not just for you. It's for those around you. It's for those God has called to you. And, and some of you have, have children that the Lord has called you to love, to pour into, to show who God made them to be. Some of you have coworkers and people around you that are waiting for you to show up. Waiting for you to be the person that God has called you to be. So my question for you is this. Who has the Lord put in your life to look out for and blaze the trail for? And then we've got to read this portion of the scripture. 
This is where the story turns and it says, as long as Moses held up his hands, there was victory. And some of you here today, this is how you feel. Oh, I've got to hold up my hands. And you're holding it and you're, you're staying strong. And there might be times where you feel like, I am not going to be able to hold my hands up much longer. This season's heavy. Season's hard. I don't know if I can handle another blow. Man, I don't know if I get hit one more time. I'm down. And here's the lesson in strength is that Moses wasn't alone on the hill. Moses had Aaron and her. This is the power of community, and this is the power of the church. This is the power of having family that you can call on. And I want to encourage someone in the room to not do it alone, but climb that hill with somebody. Have somebody by you that when your hands are trying to keep it up, you can say, you know what, I'm not going to be able to hold this much longer. Can you hold this hand? Can you hold that hand? Come on, let's do it together. And there will be seasons where you'll be the Aaron and her. You're coming alongside and you're like, Pastor, that looks heavy. Let me help you carry it. Oh, oh yeah, that, that's good. We're going to keep this up. Come on, don't give up. The Lord's called you here. Come on, come on, let's go in prayer. Come on, the Lord's going to move on your behalf. Don't give up. There's going to be seasons where you're like, I got it, I'm good. All right, now you need help, I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to be the Aaron and her for you. I'm going to hold your hands up. Look around. we got a room full of people who God has called to make a mark on the world. God's called us to climb the hill, hold up what he's put in our hands. And I want to encourage you today to not do it alone. Find an Aaron and her that can come alongside you and say, I'll hold your hands up for you. It says Aaron and her got up right next to him. One on one side, one on the other. Man, who do you have around you right now that you can ask to help hold your hands? Don't do it alone. It's a part of change girls that get you a girlfriend, get you a woman of power to be in your life, to call you out, ask questions, take you out for coffee, talk real, not just shallow talk. If you're a fella, Join the fellowship. We need each other. Can we just be real? We need each other. Because His grace is sufficient for us and His power is made perfect in our weakness. But when we're going in the power of Christ and doing what we know to do, there are days that we can second guess ourselves. And in the middle of holding up our hands, thoughts can come back. We can be like, well, maybe I am just a videographer. Maybe I'm not good enough to handle what God has put in my hand because I can't even hold this thing up anymore. I don't know what today brings up for you. It might be a day to honor and celebrate, but it might be a hard, hard day. But I believe that the Lord wants to heal and to bring about revival. Do you know what revival means? It means to bring things that are dead back to life. And I believe that on this Father's Day, that's what the Lord wants to do. As he was just downloading this stuff into my heart, and he was like, I want you to talk about strength. I want you to talk about my grace. I want you to talk about my power that's made perfect in the weakness. I want you to talk about being on top of that hill, holding up that thing in your hand. I want you to talk about community gathered around because it's in that space where you realize that God is everything, that your desperation turns from things of the world to things in his kingdom. And today, I don't know how you came in today, if you want more of the Lord, today I feel like he is going to fill everyone who is available to be filled. The Lord is not a forcer. He's a filler. He doesn't force himself on us, but he will fill what's available. 
And I believe that whatever you're facing right now, whatever you're going after, whatever you're going to the top of the hill to hold up, I believe the Lord has what you need today. And at the, at the crux of all of this is that the power of the Lord wants to fill every heart, every body, every mind. And whatever you're facing in this season, I believe that the Lord is sufficient to meet every need. So I want to pray over you. As we worship, I, I just want to spend a couple moments in closing here and just offer ourselves to the Lord. Say, Lord, fill me. Maybe some of you in this room, you need to come to that awareness that, you know what? It's not in your own power. Put, take off the cape. You don't have to be Superman, Superwoman. You've been trying to be perfect. You've been trying to attain this level of perfection, this level of superhero. But today, the Lord wants you to know it's not in your power. He wants to give you the ability to be all that he made you to be. But it's when you get your eyes off yourself and onto him, you realize that he gives you the power. Maybe some of you today, you're just like, you know, Pastor, I, I just need, I need healing from my heart. This is a hard day to, to swallow. It's a hard day. Come in. I believe that the Lord's grace is sufficient for us today. I believe that he wants to fill you with who he is. And if you're ready, I believe the Lord wants to revive what was once dead. And maybe some of you, today is one of those days you just, you don't look forward to it all. You're like, oh, it's so hard. I don't want to even face it. And I believe the Lord wants to revive it, turn it around, and make it new if you're available for it. If you're available, say, Lord, listen, I want a new perspective on my life. I want a new perspective. I remember praying, Lord, heal me of this issue. And I remember the Holy Spirit tapped me on the shoulder and said, I already did. I already filled it with something else, but you haven't realized it yet. I was so convicted. Because here I've been praying, Lord, heal me, heal me, heal me. He's like, look around. I already put people in your life to fill that void. I already, I already healed that. You just got to accept it. Whatever you need of the Lord today, would you stand to your feet? Turn this whole place into an altar, man. And as we worship, whatever you need of the Lord, can we bring our needs to him today? Say, so, Lord, fill us. Fill us with who you are. You're the only reason we're here today, Lord, is to get more of you in our lives. To get more of you. So Jesus, I pray right now, Lord, whatever is on the horizon, whether it be a, a hill we're climbing, whether it be the enemy coming in on our territory, whether it be a shaking in the camp, Lord, be our power. Be our strength. I pray that you would revive, God, what once dead. Today, Lord, let it live again.